All right, for this uh, session, we're going to look at gas laws homework number five, and I'm going to start with number one. It says carbon monoxide reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide. If one liter of carbon monoxide reacts with oxygen at STP, how many liters of oxygen are required to react, and how many liters of carbon dioxide are produced? Now, it's going to help us, obviously, to get the balanced equation down first. So I'm going to start with that. Uh, and to do that, uh, we're going to look at our... Um, problem here, carbon monoxide reacts with oxygen. That's going to be CO plus O2, remember that's one of those diatomic molecules, to produce carbon dioxide. And that's going to give us CO2. Now we're also going to want to make sure this is balanced. And right now we have one carbon on each side, but three oxygens on the left, two on the right. Uh, so to balance that, it's really going to be pretty simple. We're going to put a two in those two places. We've got a balanced equation now. That's a good thing. We can continue. Now, uh, the question that we get here is how many liters of oxygen are required to react? Uh, and one of the things that's really going to help us is to remember that one mole of any gas at STP, remember, is equal to 22.4 liters. And again, I'll just put a little reminder in there, at STP. That's terribly, terribly important for us. Uh, and it says, I believe, that we have one liter of carbon monoxide. So we have 1.0 liters of carbon monoxide. And it asks us, once again, how many liters of oxygen are required to react? Uh, this is going to be a little bit of stoichiometry, if you remember that. Uh, I know that some of you dreaded that, but we're going to go back to it. And we're going to start by taking what we know and putting it over 1. 1.0 liters of carbon monoxide over 1. Now, our first conversion factor here is going to be to get to moles. We always, always want to get to moles before we do any sort of a mole ratio. So I'm going to put one mole of carbon monoxide divided by 22.4 liters of that carbon monoxide. And I'm going to extend my T-chart out here. Now, my mole ratio, we're looking for how many liters of oxygen are required to react. And if we look up... Here, we have one mole of oxygen for every two moles of carbon monoxide. So I'm going to put that in a mole ratio here. Uh, two moles of carbon monoxide and one mole of oxygen. All right. And now we can extend our T-chart just a little bit more and finish it off here. Once we know how many moles of oxygen we have, we're going to use that 22.4 number again to convert back to liters of oxygen. So I'll put 22.4 liters of oxygen over one mole of oxygen. Now, you might say, well, why the heck do I need to divide by 22.4 and then multiply by 22.4? And you've got a point. You're correct. We are going to basically cancel those two things out. But... When we start working with grams, when we start working with things like that, it will become important for us to use that 22.4. So go ahead and go through the motions for right now. Uh, it will help you in the future, I promise. When we run through all those calculations, uh, 1.0 divided by 22.4 divided by 2 times 22.4, we should get 0 0.50 liters of oxygen is required to react. So your answer on that first one, 0 0.50 liters of oxygen is required. Now, for B, I'm going to erase some stuff here. And give me just a second so I can get this cleared off. For B, it asks us how many liters of carbon dioxide are produced. This is going to be a very, very similar problem uh, with just a little bit different mole ratio. We are again going to start with 1.0 liters of carbon monoxide over 1. We're going to use that 22.4 liters per mole. And that's carbon monoxide in both cases there. Our mole ratio here is going to be a little bit different. We're going to use 2 moles of carbon dioxide for every 2 moles of carbon monoxide. So our mole ratio is going to be 
two moles of carbon monoxide, two moles carbon dioxide. So this answer is going to be even a little bit simpler than the last one. We'll again do our 22.4 liters over one mole. I'm running out of space, so I'm not going to put CO2 there. Uh, and as you can see, you've probably already figured this out. Our answer is going to be pretty simple. 1.0 liters of carbon dioxide is produced. So there's number one. Uh, and there's your answer for 1B. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and erase the board uh, and move on to number 3 now. And there's my little uh, eraser. Uh, and number 3 asks us, if liquid carbon disulfide, or CS2, reacts with 450 milliliters of oxygen to produce the gases carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide, what volume of each product is produced? This is one of those wade through the words stoichiometry problems, uh, but we're going to do that right now. Liquid carbon disulfide. Let's start with that. Uh, that's going to be CS2, and it tells you that in the problem. Reacts with 450 milliliters of oxygen, so plus some O2. To produce the gases, carbon dioxide, we don't know what that is, and sulfur dioxide. Okay, uh, and then it asks us what volume of each product is produced. That's great, but uh, first we better balance this thing. Now we've got one carbon on each side, which is uh, just phenomenal. I'm going to use a little bit of yellow here to uh, kind of denote that. One carbon, one carbon, that's great. Uh, two sulfurs and uh, just one sulfur on the right. So we're going to have to change that to a two right there. Then I think we're good with our sulfurs. Um, our oxygens we have two and four on the right, which is six, and on the left we only have two, so we're going to want a three right there. Uh, at that point, I believe we're balanced and we can continue with our problem. Uh, it tells you that we have 450 milliliters of oxygen. Uh, it's important to note that uh, milliliters and liters are not the same thing. Well, we have 450 milliliters of oxygen that is equal to 0 0.450 liters of oxygen. And to get that, you just divide that number by 1,000. Uh, that should be on your conversion sheet. Hopefully, that is uh, not too foreign to you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and erase that just to give us plenty of room here to work this problem out. The next step, we've got that uh, 0 0.450 liters of oxygen, and we're looking to know what volume of each product is produced. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take that 0 0.450 liters, O2, and we're going to put it over one and start uh, T-charting it up here. Our first step is to uh, obviously take what you know, put it over one. Our next step is to use that 22.4 number again. So I'm going to put 22.4 liters oh, under one mole and we're still with oxygen gas. Now our mole ratio here is going to be a, a little bit more complicated uh, than the last problem. Our mole ratio here we've got three moles of oxygen and we're going to start with carbon dioxide for every one mole of carbon dioxide. So our mole ratio is actually going to be three moles of oxygen down here and one mole of carbon dioxide up there. That's going to give us a little bit of a different uh, type of answer. It's not just going to be quite as simple as dividing by two or multiplying by two. Uh, our last step then is uh, not too terribly complicated. We'll just uh, multiply by that 22.4 number again. 22.4 liters over one mole. And our answer on this one should be point 0.15 liters of carbon dioxide. So you're going to produce 0.15 liters of carbon dioxide. Now I'm going to erase the bottom here. Uh, I'll leave the work on the top and we'll get to see how similar these two really are. Um, I'm going to erase just this answer piece here. Again it was 0.15 liters of carbon dioxide. Uh, and I'm going to go with, I'm going to go purple for this uh, sulfur one just so we can keep those straight. 
Again, we're going to start with 0 0.450 liters of oxygen. And I'm going to make our big T-chart here. And again, we're going to do one mole of oxygen over 22.4 liters. Uh, our mole ratio here, we've got two moles of sulfur dioxide for every three moles of oxygen. So we'll have three moles of oxygen down here and two moles of the sulfur dioxide up on top. And then once again, we'll multiply by that 22.4 liters over one mole. Um, I haven't really done a very good job of canceling units, but uh, our units do cancel here. It works out really nicely. We get moles of oxygen goodbye, moles of sulfur or sulfur dioxide goodbye. Uh, and our answer here should be 0 0.30 liters of sulfur dioxide. So your answer for that first part was 0.15 liters of carbon dioxide. Your answer for the second part here is 0 0.30 liters of sulfur dioxide. Hopefully that went all right for you. I'm going to go ahead and uh, erase the board one more time, and we'll move on to number five here. And number five says a mixture of hydrogen, or excuse me, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen gases exerts a total pressure. I'm going to put in the P total here. Total pressure of 278 kilopascals. If the partial pressures of the oxygen and hydrogen, partial pressures of the oxygen and hydrogen, are 112 kilopascals and 101 kilopascals, respectively, what would be the partial pressure exerted by the nitrogen? Now this one is brutally easy, and I'm, uh, it's just a good review question for you to kind of bring that uh, Dalton's Law back into your head. Um, we're going to use Dalton's Law here. 278 kilopascals equals 112 kilopascals plus 101 kilopascals plus P nitrogen. Uh, once we get that, it is just simple subtraction, folks, uh, and P nitrogen, or the pressure from the nitrogen, is going to be 65 kilopascals. Again, that's uh, Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. With that, I've uh, walked you through about half of the homework for number five. Hopefully that cleared up any questions you have, and you'll come to class tomorrow and get a big old check or maybe even a plus if it's a plus day. Have a good evening. Bye.